What's up, everyone? Welcome to Chronos Before the Ashes on Nintendo Switch. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying that this game is available on Nintendo Switch because not too long ago, this was an Oculus Rift exclusive. This was a VR only game. And now we're playing it on the Switch, which is pretty crazy. Um, I, I have played it before, full disclosure. I've played this game on the Oculus and I beat it when it first came out. And I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but that was like, I wanna say almost four years ago, maybe three years ago now. Um, and it looks significantly different on console in general, not just Switch, but all consoles, um, because it had like a fixed camera and almost like tanky controls. It was really cool the way they, they did the VR stuff. Um, where you kind of like were the the observer watching this character, your character, run around the world. Um, so that was really cool. And uh, I beat it, like I said. And now it's out on, on consoles and they reworked it to make it actually work for, you know, Switch and Xbox and PS4 and I think PC as well. It'd be weird if it wasn't on PC. Uh, so like I said, I did play a little bit of this um, just to kind of get the game started because there's like a really long, weird intro part to it that kind of drags on for a little too long in my opinion but i was actually i got i got a code for this game and i did plan on making a video about it a little earlier um like a couple days ago but the code just activated uh on release day which was yesterday but i was working on morbid stuff so i had priorities that i needed to get done but anyway this is uh yeah this is it so so we are like at the very early stages of the game maybe this is like the first 20 minutes or so and it is a Souls-like game, but it's very different from other Souls-like games because it has some very interesting mechanics that I think are really impressive and, and actually pretty interesting. So unlike in most Souls games, uh, when you die in Kronos, you actually uh, get older, which is pretty crazy. You start out as like an 18-year-old, and every single time you die, you age one year. And you can see right now I'm pretty young. I'm, I'm beaten up. I'm getting ready to die. Um, so you age, and then you can sort of like level up and add uh, stats and stuff to your character, get stronger. Uh, so it does make the game easier the more you die, which is really weird. And your character changes and everything. Like their hair turns gray. If, if you're if you play as a guy, you get like a beard and stuff. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. It's it's it does different stuff. Like usually in Souls games, especially in something like Demon Souls. When you die, the game naturally gets harder, which is very cruel, but also a cool mechanic, I would say. Um, in Kronos, when you die, you age, which isn't the nicest thing, but you get stronger, too. So if you're new to Souls games and, and you're curious about, you know, checking them out and you don't want to start with Dark Souls or something insane like that, um, definitely think about Kronos, because it's fun, uh, and it's also a little bit easier than more uh, other Souls games in the uh, in the same vein, I guess. But um, yeah, as you can see, we are playing on Switch, and uh, it's a little it's a little choppy on Switch. Like handheld mode looks really nice, but it definitely runs at 30 frames. I'm not exactly sure what this is running at right now. I can't tell if this is 60 or 30 frames. I think it's 60 though, so I'm gonna go ahead and just render this at, uh, video out at 60. Uh, but we'll, I'll double check that in post, and maybe I'll put like a message right here and let you know exactly what it is. Um, Combat-wise, it's not as difficult as your typical Souls game too. I would say it's not nearly as like you know precise with timing and parrying and stuff. I guess, I don't, I guess there is a parry. I can't remember if this move right here is a parry or if it's just like a shield bash. Whoa, how did I, I don't even know how I got my health back. I'm paying way more attention to what I'm saying than actually playing the game, so I'll try and, and do better at both. Um, but yeah, like, like I was saying, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier, especially when it comes to combat stuff, so. It's a nice introduction to, to Souls-like experiences. But I did play this game, like like I said, three or four years ago. So I don't remember very much of like the level designs and layouts and stuff like that. So it does feel like I'm walking back into something new. I bet you anything this is like a variable uh, frame rate. Like it's unlocked. It feels like it's unlocked. It definitely locks in handheld mode at 30. 
but on uh, when you're playing on TV mode, I feel like it like unlocks and it goes anywhere between you know 60 to the low 20s, which is kind of unfortunate. I'd, if that is true, I'd rather them just kind of lock it at 30 and just leave it that way. I mean, we've played plenty of great games like this in this genre at 30 frames per second, so not really a necessary thing. And in case you're wondering too, um, when you you can make a character in this game, it's not it's not too elaborate with the character creator. It's more so about um, just picking a gender, male or female, and then you um, you don't customize any other aspect of them. But you can like build up here. I, I, we just leveled up, so I can show you perfectly. You can um, level up different stats. So there's like strength, agility, arcane, vitality. I'm not really sure where I want to take this character just yet. So I've just been dumping uh, points into vitality just to keep my health higher. How many points do we have here? I have to hold A. Oh, press it, and then we tap. Well, so we have four points. So there, we can bring our health up to 620 from 540, which is actually a pretty nice boost. Fill our health back up. So I haven't died yet, which is pretty interesting. Usually I die right away in uh, Souls games, especially in the beginning when I'm getting accustomed to the controls and stuff. I will say though that the game still is really beautiful. I don't think this is full 1080p either. If it is, they're doing some really weird wizard wizardry. But you can see like the details, like there's like a lot of, um, or actually no anti-aliasing happening at all around the characters. So this might be just under 1080p, maybe like 900p, closer to 720. Um, and this room is actually really beautiful. I think it's a puzzle room. Broke his guard now. So that's the dragon thing. So look at the, the my health bar. You see that like little pink bar underneath my white bar? That is, I guess, the dragon shard thing. So this is the third one of these shimmering splinter stone things I've picked up. And I believe now I can upgrade this sword. Which I guess we'll do. I guess it's probably worth it. Brings it up five. Oh, I guess I picked up four of them. I wasn't even paying attention. This will be permanent, confirm. Yes, of course. Of course I want 50 damage. Who wants stinky 45 damage when they can have 50? Let's pull this lever. And work our way. I was going to say down, but I guess we're going up. Our next stone. That's where this thing took us. Wow, look at those particle effects. Those might be some of the nicest particle effects I've seen on Switch. For what it's worth. Let's see if we can get a closer view just by zooming in. Yeah, I mean, they did a good job. Oh no, I pressed A. Alright, <laughs> we're back. So let's see, this side right here is locked, I'm pretty sure. We can't pass through here. But it's going to be a shortcut that we can open up later on in the game. And that's going to be a very welcome shortcut because some of these areas are pretty big and it's a it's very maze-like, the way that you make your way through this game. Look at this cute little dude. Unfortunately, I don't think you can backstab either. Oh, wow, these guys take a lot of hits. Take a lot of hits, that's for sure. Oh, he's got like a little torchy thing too. So I can dodge as much as I want. I'm pretty sure I can hit as much as I want because none of it drains stamina. Which I think is one of the things that, I, that makes this game significantly easier as a Souls-like game. Where it's not really draining your stamina. See there, you, the, you can see right there, the frame rate is like significantly better. It's like at 60 right here. But then, if you go into combat or into something a little bit more insane, something a little bit more um, hardware intensive, then it definitely gets choppier. Which is fine, it's not like an unplayable frame rate, but it's certainly not smooth 60. So th I'm, I think this guy's a boss. I'm pretty sure he's a boss. Let's, let's get a closer look. I hope we don't wake him up. Looks crazy. Can I? Oh, I can lock onto him. 
Why can I lock onto him? Can I hit him? Oh yeah, he's awake. I'm very worried about what's, what's about to happen here. This might be our first death. You can see me at 19. And we died. All right, time to age a whole year. Here we go. Oh, we get spat right out. Right out of the crystal. So each time your character dies, uh, they advance in age by one year. When young, strength and agility are dominant. Oh, that's what I forgot to mention. But as your character ages, arcane becomes more prominent. So you naturally get wiser. You naturally get better at magic. I, that's such a cool mechanic. It's so cool. I really like that a lot. When severely advanced in, in age, strength and agility can no longer be purchased. Oh, after all your characters, uh, or after your character dies, all dragon hearts in your inventory are fully recharged. I'm not really sure what that means. But I guess I should probably be focusing on, like, strength and stuff like that or this early on in the game. Alright, back through this room. Officially terrified of this guy. I hope he doesn't wake up again. Let's see if we can crank this handle. Oh, there we go. I, I guess I have to keep tapping. Is he waking up? Oh, no. So I have to get this thing open before... Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I mean, he's definitely... Oh, okay, it happened. All right, that's good. We did it. So I guess we're not supposed to take him out just yet. We have to fight him a little later. This guy trying to be all ninja on us. Oh! What? I forgot that this guy could do that. I forgot that he could grab. Or crawl or whatever. I gotta just run through there. Is that gate open? He's already awake. The gate is open, so we're just gonna run. We'll run past this guy. It's okay, your little dagger thing is not going to do very much damage on us at all. Look at this guy. It's pretty scary. What is the... Oh, he dropped the shard. I was like, what can I press B with? Like, what is that going to do? These caverns. Alright, there's a mage guy. Gotta get rid of this mage dude first. Oh, what is that? A fire shield? Oh, it's like a fire attack. I got fire. That's what my fire looks like. Lots of upgrade stones. Is that giant right above us? I think it is. Alright, well... Can't get distracted. Got to take out this mage first. So there's two different directions we can go. I think we can also fall down there if we really want to. But I'm not going to do that. Oh, this guy saw us. He's coming for us. Alright, before we go down there, because I'm pretty sure it's just... Yeah, it just leads to down there. Let's check out what's on the other side and make sure we don't miss anything important. Okay. Well, you're not important. And what's cool, too, about my, like, little healing artifact that I have um, is that I'm pretty sure it'll just fully restore my health. Which is very nice. Don't have to worry about like a halfway heal point. Speaking of healing artifact, here's another one. So you start out with none, and then you quickly get your first one, and then you can you can see that you uh, you unlock more as you go. I don't remember how many you get, but it's a pretty pretty good amount of them, that's for sure. So we'll work our way down here. I'm happy that we went and checked that other side because I would have missed this healing thing. So let's see what is here. Aged and tarnished, this metal bar resembles cast iron, though it feels much heavier. And I think this is our shortcut that I was talking about earlier. Actually, no, it's not. It's definitely not. <laughs> Looks totally different. Did you guys drop anything? Nobody dropped anything? Okay. 
This is not our shortcut. But we are definitely making good progress. Ooh, is that... What is that? Is that a weapon? Made from some unknown metal. This appears to have been machined with a purpose in mind. Okay. I'm sure we'll use that. Oh, we can combine items. It's very Resident Evil of this game. Combine with Y. Combine it with the... Uh, metal hand. Oh, this aged but sturdy crank appears to have been have seen heavy use at some point. Its weight and construction implies that it was built to stand the test of time. Cool. Do we need to use it on this thing? I guess we do. So then we can crank this open. It wants me to mash B to get this door open. Oh, and look, there's the other side from where we came, so I guess it just loops around. Try and get this door open before this mage gets to us. I guess your health restores every single time you level up, too. Which is something that I don't think I've ever noticed before. Before we go through that little gate area, what is here? Do I have anything I can put in there? I guess I don't have what I need. So let's run back to this side. And go through that gate. Man, I am getting through this so much faster than the first time I played this game. The first time I played this game, this this took me days to beat. I feel like I could probably beat this game in, like, less than 10 hours at this point. Whoa. Just traverse through a mirror. Ah, uh, here is the shortcut that I was talking about. So let's, let's unlock that. So now we know if we die, we can always just come back in through here. Very happy to have that shortcut open. Oh, that's right. I can make the matching signs. I think that's what you have to do. So you have to... Alright, so this... You can change these things right here to match the symbols of where you want to go, essentially. It's like creating a portal. So we're going to leave it there as is. And it took me the longest time to figure out the first time through, but you have to change those signs uh, to go to the next spot, which is something that's it should be easier, or sh <laughs> it should it shouldn't be as hard as it sounds, but it was really difficult the first time for me. Oh, out of nowhere this guy came. All right, little guy's down. There's the big guy. <coughs> Excuse me. I wanted to heal, but I leveled up instead. So, it just auto-healed me. Which is very convenient. Flashy thing. Part channel, part key. This spout was designed to lock and unlock a valve. Oh, I know exactly where we need to take this. This is where that uh, little item was supposed to be placed before. Get back. Get back. Don't burn down the books. I'm gonna set this place on fire. There we go. Right in the mouth. I'm so happy there's no load screen right there. It just connects you right away. I guess it's time to fill this with water. There we go. Let it rain. And we can actually watch the water travel. Which I always thought was pretty neat. I wonder though what it does. Is it going to shoot a giant laser up the giant's butt? That would be hilarious. I wish it were that easy, but it's not. So let's see down here. If anything changed for us? It looks like we're going down, and the water was going down, so... I think we're going where we need to be going. So that's the water that we just spouted. Some sort of special item. Nearly the size of a man's head, this octagonal, octagonal stone gleams 
with an eerie golden light. So maybe we can put this stone uh, in front of the statue. Yeah, that looks just like this statue. I don't mind backtracking in this in in games, um, even in this game. But sometimes it does feel like they're just trying to fill out time a little bit, especially because like none of the enemies reload ever. So it's not like you're gonna have anything to fight right away. But it's fine, at least the area itself is not that big, so it doesn't take too long to get back and forth to where you need to be. Alright. Opened up the secret door. There's nothing on that side, right? Yeah, there's nothing. Whoa, there's the giant guy. Yeah, this in VR was really cool, especially because, like, the perspective is so different. Like, they make this guy look, or your character look really small. And then the giant obviously looks gigantic in VR. It's really cool stuff what they did. Oh, sorry, did I interrupt something? This is, like, I guess a mini-boss. Mid-boss. Oh, he hits very hard. Oh, so close! This guy is just very strong, like, you can't even really fully block his attacks. I think dodging is pretty much the only choice here. There we go. Got him. What did he drop? Another upgrade shard? Cool. Very cool. And I think we need this rune-like symbol uh, to activate the portal that we need. And I think we should be able to see the shapes. From here. Yes, this is this is the shape right here. So let's see, I'm gonna take a picture of it with my phone. So I have it handy here. So it's like an AVC. I could have just remembered that. AVC, easy enough. They're not that rune like. Whoa, I forgot this guy can reach. This guy can punch through stuff. Won't let me put this one in there. Hmm. All right, so we're missing something. But it's hard for me to try and remember what we're possibly missing. Uh, I didn't want to call you guys over here. Oh, there's a door there that we haven't opened up. Maybe there's something there. Oh my god, these guys have me cornered. They have me pinned against the wall. Get back. Nope, I guess I'm not doing that. I'm gonna take these guys out. I'm gonna win. Yup. And I leveled up. Didn't even need to heal. A, V, C. It's easy as one, two, three. Oh, I guess I don't have the right key to open this door. There must be something that I missed. I feel, maybe it's back in like the library area? Is this the library area? So there is something right here. There's something flashing here. I remember now kind of what it is that I need to do. Okay, there we go. Right there. And then a backwards C. Perfect. So now we've activated a new destination. And once again, like this part in VR was insane. It was so cool. Look at how big those guys are now. And because we're really small, we're in the bookshelf. So I love this part. There's tiny little enemies right here. Oh my god, their voices are also like mi miniaturized. Heal up just in case. Probably one of the coolest parts in a video game that I've seen in a, in a while. So cool. Let's see. What do we do here? Oh yeah, we we have to repel off of this little bookmark thing. Such a cool little concept. They move pretty slow. I bet we could just outrun them. Man, I'm sitting on so many skill points, I feel like. 
Yeah, let's just outrun these guys. I don't want to waste any time fighting them. They're still trying to get over here while I push this key down. Okay, awesome. So now we have the key to that door that was locked. Now we just got to get back into big mode and we should be good. I have no idea what that's for. Okay, here's our door once again. And the key worked. Who knew? Where's our rune piece? The rune piece better be in here. Oh, I guess we gotta get through this guy first. What? I totally dodged that. I totally dodged that too. Alright. Good. He's down. Silver locket. Not sure what to do with the locket. But this is how we're gonna take down our boss. God, she looks so tired right now. I mean, I don't blame her. I'd be exhausted too if I was running through this world like this, trying to fight weird wind up mechanical demon toys and travel through portals and weird nonsense. Okay, we're about to fight this boss. I don't wanna get one shotted, but uh, we'll see. It usually happens. Here we go. So remember, he was a giant, right? But now we are giants as well. We can fight the giant Krell Guardian. That was so close. So close, so close. A couple more hits should do it. Him perfect. There we go. One, two, oh, three. There we go. Perfect. He's down. See you later, Krell. Can we get past that invisible wall now? No. Oh, what just happened? And they brought us back to this room. Perfect. Awesome. This is a great spot to wrap up this video. Um, this has been Kronos Before the Ashes on Nintendo Switch, but it's also available on Xbox, PC, PS4. So anywhere you want to play it, you can play it. Um, you can even play it on the Oculus, and that's honestly where I suggest you play it uh, if you do have an Oculus. Check it out there. If not, then play it on one of these consoles. Let me know what you guys think about this game if you're interested in it at all. I'm not sure, like I said, if I'm going to do another episode of this just because I've played this game before. Uh, but if you do like it, if you do want to see more, let me know. Otherwise, uh, thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you guys in the next one.